in your screen, you can see some of the protected categories that are applicable by federal and state law. This information can be found on our affirmative action, diversity and equal opportunity plan. I will like to take some time to show you how to find it. When you go to our site, you are able to scroll down and see related links. The related links section includes the equal opportunity, diversity and affirmative action plan as the first link that you can access. This is a very important document. And the reason why this is an important document is because it outlines all of our policies that we expect you as a student, whether you are in your first year or you're a graduate student, um, will be familiar with. This includes a policy statement of non-discrimination and diversity, our policy against discrimination, discriminatory harassment and retaliation, our sexual violence policy, as well as policies for reasonable accommodations for persons with disabilities. It also includes our hiring procedures under affirmative action, which is one of the things my office handles, and it outlines the investigatory process when we receive complaints of discrimination. The resolution for these cases can be formal or informal, and it can be found on that same document. Also in our website, when you scroll down toward the end, there is a section under discrimination and bias incident reporting. There are a couple of options to report different types of behavior to our office. As you see in a purple oval on your screen, the reporting options at the bottom include the discrimination complaint form and a bias incident reporting form. I would like to take a minute to show you what the discrimination complaint form looks like. This document is also part of our plan but can be accessed online just the way I show you a second ago. If anyone on our campus feels that there has been discriminatory behavior that has allegedly taken place against them, they are free to fill this form. They will need to include their contact information as well as the type of alleged discrimination or discriminatory harassment that has taken place. They will need to include names of individuals that may have knowledge of the situation, as well as witnesses. And they will need to provide a description of the actual complaint. This information comes directly to me and I will make a determination as to whether or not it falls on their plan. If it falls on their plan, we will continue with the typical investigatory process that we have outlined. If it doesn't, the person filing the complaint will be informed of that. The second option for reporting that you can see on that screen is the bias incident reporting form. The bias incident reporting form looks like this. And this is a document that can be accessed and completed online by anyone who thinks a bias incident has taken place on our campus or amongst individuals that are part of our campus community. All reports of bias incidents are directed to myself as the Equal Opportunity Officer, and this report is then taken to the Bias Incident Response Team for review of the actual information. We do not share identifiable information. We do not share names. Um, we also talk about incidents as a whole pertaining to employees or students of mem or members of our campus community. This document similarly will ask for contact information, the involved parties, whether they are witnesses or they are the person who allegedly um, acted against someone else based on bias. We also ask for a description of the incident that took place, but importantly, the reporting information can be anonymous for this type of report. So if someone would like to file it, but they are not sure or they want their information to remain anonymous, they are able to do so. 
Next, we have the campus police information because I think it's important for all of you to know that you are able to submit an anonymous tip to our campus police if you think someone may have broken the law and it's a situation that they should be aware of. At any time, please dial extension 8911 if you think you're in danger. Um, please know that our campus police has a community policing approach to law enforcement. They do 24 hour patrols on campus and they are the ones who take care of criminal investigations, which means those are the situations where someone has broken the law.